If you're considering on selling your Amazon FBA business team, it is absolutely essential that you understand ad bags. And moreover, what really qualifies as an ad bag. Because it can really mean differences of millions of dollars that you get as a valuation for your business. That's what I'm going to be discussing in this video. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel to get new videos every week. So the topic is that what qualifies as an ad back. So we are, today we are going to be talking about ad backs. So basically costs that significantly increase Amazon FBA business valuation. So last week we talked about how to evaluate an Amazon FBA business. And in many ways, it's very similar that it's about evaluating like different e-commerce businesses. So many things are pretty similar, but there are like some things that are more distinctive in, in the Amazon FBA business field. But yeah, so last week we talked about the seller's discretionary earnings. So it basically means the annual earnings. And uh, typically with bigger businesses, or not big, but basically if you go over like $10 million, $10 million then we are going to be talking about like EBITDA. But if it's less than that, then usually we are going to be using this. SDE, so seller's discretionary earnings. So we talked about the SDE. So the SDE is, is basically, it's basically the formula for calculating the seller's discretionary earnings is the net profit, and this is pre-tax, and the ad backs. Like when you combine use the, the, these two things, you, you're going to be having the, basically the earnings, the SDE for, for, a, for a trailing period of 12 months. So typically the, the, that's the standard. So, but it doesn't really specify that which till 12 month period. So is it like 12 months from here to history or is it last year, last calendar year? So that's basically more up to the negotiation to, together with the buyer. But anyway, so let's focus on the topic. Let's not get sidetracked. So what are these ad backs that we, are, we have there in the formula? So if you want to sum it up to one sentence, then it is these are costs that do not carry over to the buyer. That seems pretty clear, you know? So it's basically any kind of cost that the, once the business has been transferred, then the buyer doesn't have to be keep paying. So cost that the seller has, but the buyer will not need to keep paying these once the brand has been transferred. By the way, I mean, just ask questions if, if, if anything is unclear so I can explain it more thoroughly. But the thing is that uh, most people, most sellers don't put enough ad backs and if you do if you do that do that and don't add like enough th things that could be there, then you're going to be losing money. You need to be ready in order to avoid deal breakers. So when you're considering about selling your business, then uh, we we need to keep in mind that there are different kinds of uh, deal breakers. Of course, uh, it it pretty much. I mean, there. If you're talking about all, only about Amazon, like only about the, these Amazon aggregators, there's, there's already like hundreds of these. So there are many different types of buyers in this type, but let's say that in a general level, these are some of the deal breakers. One thing is definitely like, definitely like depends, dependency to you as the owner. So we have talked about talk before about this transferability so what it means that is that, okay, if I want to buy your brand, then how easily can it be transferred to me? And the more difficult it is, then the more harder it will be there to actually get a, get, get, get a good deal. Because let's say that your brand and everything in on your business is about you. So one 
key thing about your brand is basically you as a person. So maybe your spokesperson, maybe your faces, faces like everywhere. Then it's gonna be pretty weird if the if I actually like uh, buy your business and you are not there anymore, right? So I mean that's pretty clear. But then another key thing is like messy books. So this means like accounting, bookkeeping. So if it's really like if, if everything is a really mess, then it means that it's more, it's harder to verify all the numbers. And if we cannot verify the numbers, if we are only relying on, on um, the reports we get from Amazon or, uh, or basically there's the documents that we get from the suppliers, then it's not really, it, it doesn't give the confidence that all these numbers in terms of profit, profitability can be actually verified. Because it's, it's not, a, not all the costs are happening inside of Amazon. So that's, that's one definite, I mean, we should keep books in order regardless. But this is uh, definitely a like good incentive why to keep the books in order because if you're not if, if the books are not in order it's it's going to be much more difficult for us to sell our brand. Then, well, this is not applicable to everyone, but typically, I mean, if you have really lots amount of SKUs and basically it's all dumped into one brand, so it's like this uh, store that just basically. Well, I mean, it's not applicable to everyone, but uh, for some uh, it, it is. And uh, for me, it would definitely be because I don't, I don't, I don't want to buy a business that has like uh, lots of other SKUs because that means that it's going to be a lot of work for me to take over that brand. And typically, I mean, any, any kind of business has hero products. So I, I, even if there's like 100 products, then typically it's going to be like 20 products that are basically bringing on bringing on maturity maturity of the revenue so the thing is that i mean we already established that that there are many of these buyers there are many amazon aggregators in, in the in the space and these ad backs can actually be buyer specific so what does that mean which basically means that uh, what one buyer accepts then another buyer might not accept as an ad back. So it's much more about that we build our case and we can clearly like explain that why this is an expense that should be added as an ad back because it's something that will not be carried over to the buyer. But yeah, I mean, uh, if they let's say that the buyer is fixated on saying that hey i mean this expense is not acceptable as an um, ad back then i mean if they are really fixated on that then i mean then there's uh, not much you can do right so then it would be just a case that okay if you're not happy with basically uh, that rejects and then you just need to look for uh, another buyer so they, these, these are definitely like buyer specific and it comes much down to the case of like how, how much the buyer actually wants to get your brand. Like if they really, really, really want to get your brand, then probably they are, they are going to be looking, looking much, much loosely at these ad backs. All right, but I mean, a word of a warning here that since there are so many different players uh, in, in the space, like hundreds of these uh, Amazon aggregators, I mean, there are also some, some uh, players that don't really play by the rules. So, I mean, some unethical buyers can play dirty and at the deal signing phase, which means that, uh, I mean, I mean every, everything has already been agreed if the, like the valuation and that stuff, then basically after that point, they would start rejecting some previously agreed ad backs. So, I mean, I have heard cases of this happening also on the Amazon space. 
and there's actually a really good uh, podcast you should check it check out regarding this so basically the seller tells about his experience what happened so i can send you send you a link for that one but yeah i mean so just this is just to keep in mind that not everyone is playing uh, playing fair so yeah so we are we have already established that ad packs play a really crucial role in when we are selling an Amazon FBA business. So what are the different types of ad backs that there are? So let's start digging in. So there's different levels. So the first level would be like, uh, like owner salaries, loans, and that kind of stuff. Second level would be like one-time expenses. So it's something that the business pays one time it doesn't it's not a reoccurring it's not reoccurring like what for example sal salaries would be and then the third level is this discretionary expenses and this level actually this level is the level that will take most of the most of the work because it requires us to really dig dig into into our business and into our expenses and start like look going through everything so this level number three is where we where we are going to be spending most of our time when uh, when we start doing these calculations for the ad packs so, so yeah but anyway let's go uh, first level by level so level one so it basically it, it means the one one owner's salary working full-time so full-time meaning 40 hours per week and the reason why there is this uh, kind of like time limit there and um, time limit is that i mean let's say that there's a business and there's uh, five owners and all of the owners are working full-time everyone's working 40 hours per week Ah, I mean, uh, wow, I mean, that's that's quite a lot of work, right? So th it, it immediately gives this like warning sign that, hey, I mean, is, is this business really that that amount of like a uh, uh, huge amount of work, meaning that six owners need to be working 40 hours per week full time. So that's why there is this time limit there, like 40 hours per week. But at the same time, it means that let's say that we have multiple owners. And uh, okay, let, let's say that uh, there's two owners and they are not working equally, like the e equal amount of work. So let's say um, uh, like, okay, Victor, Victor is working like 40 hours per week on uh, on our business. But let's say that I'm, I'm, I'm a really lazy bugger, so. <laughs> I'm, I'm working like zero hours per week and all I do is just uh, complain about things. So I'm, I'm not working at all. So when there's this uneven balance, then, I mean, the, the question is that, okay, fine. If, if you have like two owners and the one is working full time and the another one doesn't work at all, like do, do those still count? So basically the, the, the rule is, is that it's more about the hours than it's about like how many people there are. So if, if Victor is working full time, 40 hours per week, and I work like uh, zero hours per week, but we still get the same amount of salary, then it would basically sum up one, one of the, one of this one owner salary, meaning that it, both of our salaries would be added as an add back. But yeah, I mean, with multiple owners, there's this like market value projection. And then any kind of loans. I mean, that, that's pretty clear as well. I mean, uh, if the business has loan, then, then that, that loan is basically not, not, not counted for this. And some like clear personal expenses that will not carry, on, carry over to the new, new owner. And one thing about loan is that here on on the Amazon FBA 
uh, space, I mean, m most of the deals will be uh, about buying the assets. So n not the actual legal entity. It, it, it depends more on the country, like where the legal entity is. For example, with UK, there might be reasons why it actually makes more sense for the buyer to buy the whole legal entity. But anyway, I mean, it, let's say that uh, uh, when we are mostly ha like uh, buying and selling assets, then for example, these loans, I mean, they stay with the legal entity. So obviously the new owner, the buyer, it's not going to be uh, paying for those uh, loans. So that's the reason like wh why they basically are added this ad, ad back. Okay, then one-time expenses. Well, like the name says, it's anything that uh, the business pays for one time and doesn't need to keep paying like uh, in the future. <laughs> but actually, I just uh, kind of realized that trademarks are not really, uh, I mean, obviously like trademarks, you need to renew at some point. So in that sense, it's not really one time, but in, in terms of selling a business, it's, it, it, it is actually like one time expense. So it qualifies as an ad back even though that can be re renewed and there's going to be fees on renewing and then different kinds of um, let's say that there's a lawsuit against the legal entity or uh, or there there's something that the like the company had to pay for for example i know in the amazon space uh, i know one seller, seller who had to pay some um, uh case when it was about basically they, they had uh, violated uh, one graphic designer's uh, copyright so they had ordered just some stuff from uh, fiverr or so from so for, from some other like freelancer and the freelancer had actually actually just uh, st stolen some images uh, or basically didn't have the right to use such images so that basically ended up in 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 a, in a lawsuit. But anyway, like those kind of expenses will not be part of this. Uh, the, the the valuation so valuation so those will those will be added back. And any kind of other like one time expenses like freelancer work like graphics or doing books or stuff like that. Then different kind of equipment. So if you buy yourself a computer phone or whatever i mean that's just a one-time expense and um the, it will be it can be added back then different kind of depreciation and amortization and those kind of stuff so if you buy something and it uh loses value or increases value basically those are the things that uh well, not appreciation, but depreciation, so losing value. So those are like one-time expenses. Then let's go to level four. So these discretionary expenses. So as we established before, so this is the level that we are going to be spending most of our time. So this is the level that really will uh, take most of the effort for us to figure out that uh, what can we qualify as an ad back. So this basically, this level basically means that these are non-essential, uh, non-essential uh, expenses. So these are expenses that the business doesn't really need to be paying for in order to run the business. And if it's not something that is required for running the business then uh, at the same time uh, it's not something that the new buyer is is going to be paying for it so it's not an expense that will carry over so the, these are any kind of uh, expenses related to like training travel courses coaching going to conferences and expenses uh, coming from those so like hotel rooms and flight tickets and 
all that stuff. So I mean, it, it's also it's also always very important that we invest into our knowledge. So that's definitely a good reason why we should buy different kinds of training and go to different kinds of conferences. So good news is that uh, no matter if, if, even if you like go wild with these kind of expenses, that it's it's it won't hurt your valuation. Then actually. This is actually a bit questionable. So mobile phone and internet lines. I mean, the thing is that typically, uh, I mean, uh, the buyer, the buyer already has 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 these things uh, already in place. For example, mobile finance and internet lines. I mean, let's okay, fine. If you would buy a business, then uh, like an e-commerce business, then obviously. Obviously, there it, need, it needs to have an uh, internet line. So it would, if it would be some kind of business that, uh, for example, uh, customer service line or some kind of stuff related with that, then it actually makes sense that no, 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 you cannot add it as an ad pack because it's something that the business requires. So it's you need to have a line where customers can call and that kind of stuff. But I mean, in most cases, that's not the, that's not the, really the case. So those kind of expenses can be added. And this, this is a really important thing. So overpaid employees. And here we can also ask that, okay, fine. What is overpaid? Well, that's completely sub subjective, isn't it? <laughs> like who is to say that this employee in question uh, is uh, compensated like properly like what is the limit that it's overpaid so then these kind of things uh related with employees and these are really like uh, uh open to negotiation and open to in interpretation but the thing is that uh, we should be aware of this that we can we can do this we can add basically like many employees as these uh, discretionary expenses, if we can just make the case that these are these are things that uh, will not carry over for you, and you, you are not going to be needing like this, so that's why this can be added as an uh, add back. And uh, let's say that um, you have a family member uh, working for your business, and you're like completely overpaying that. Or maybe, maybe that person is not working at all. Maybe you're just uh, for the fun of it, you're paying your spouse some uh, salary. Well, I mean, if that's the case, then yes, I mean, it can be added. It, it can be, it, it can qualify as an ad back. And then different kind of tariffs. So this is something that uh, we definitely need to put uh, careful consideration because um, I mean, when we, in this kind of uh, business model where we are selling like uh, physical products and we are importing those to different countries, then uh, tolls and tariffs and th this is something that we definitely need to look look into because it can really have a big impact. Then different kind of cash back rewards. Well, we don't really have that. You know, I mean, this is not really that popular, for example, in Finland, but uh, here in the US, I mean, uh, you can get cash backs pretty much for anything. So it's really popular here. So it just means that you are using this cash back credit card. So when you spend, you actually earn these uh, rewards. So basically those kind of things and get, could be added back. And you can do that even if you use your personal credit card to pay for these um, business expenses, which then gives you these uh, cashback rewards. Then this is uh, a point that has a big impact on most of our businesses. So reduced cost of goods. So for example, if you manage to get your product purchase cost from uh, let's say from six dollars to three dollars 
then okay fine your cost of uh, goods sold well let's say that it, it doesn't impact your cost of goods sold because you haven't like sold sold those yet but the thing is that um, this this is something that the new new uh, owner will pay because the buyer is is not going to be paying six dollars per unit so they are going to be paying three dollars so if we have this kind of if we are able to reduce this cost of goods then i mean we can add this retroactively because the buyer is going to be paying this new price so they are not going to be paying six dollars per unit they're going to be paying three dollars per unit so that's why we should be compensated for this uh, lower cost that we were just able to get to our business okay so let's discuss what doesn't qualify for an ad back opportunity cost for example if we run out of stock i mean we know that's the worst thing that can happen when in selling on amazon right we run out of stock and we do not have anything to sell yeah i mean uh, especially last year i'm sure like um, the buyers can uh, empathize uh, with us if, if you are running out of stock but i mean no no i mean it cannot be added as an ad back let's say that okay i mean we was we would have sold x amount of units if we had had stock no i mean it's you can really add it as an uh, to the calculations i mean or as an ad back sure i mean somehow you could get some kind of like um value increase for this if you can really make a good place good case for it but in terms of uh, qualifying as an ad back then uh, i'm afraid it's no not really possible and then if we have had any kind of like failed advertising or ranking campaigns so the key word here really is failed so if we did a campaign and it didn't really produce the results that we were going after for example let's say that um, uh, you're doing something like press press camping campaign well actually th those are a bit difficult to measure so let, let's let's talk about paid ads instead so if, if, you, if you're doing like facebook ads or google ads campaign so we spent a few thousand bucks on uh, on these paid ads campaigns and there are no results meaning that we don't get increased sales or we don't really get uh, like incre increased leads either so i mean then we can really add this it doesn't really qualify as an ad back and yes as uh, we already established so multiple owners salaries if the work hours are over 40 hours per week so let's say that uh, victor and uh, i are both working like 40 hours per week full time on this on this business then we cannot add like both of our salaries there but if we work like inequally then um, then that that's a different case <clears throat> so I really want to emphasize this um, I mean, give you a tip. So use your cross profit as the starting point where you should try to get the SDE using these ad packs. Because if we really look hard, we can really find uh, like uh, these ad packs quite easily. We can quite easily explain that this is a this is not this is non essential uh, th this was non essential expense that we paid but you as the new owner you won't you won't be paying this so if if we can uh, like clearly explain it then uh, uh, it's definitely it's possible that we can actually make the case but anyway so the tip here is to use the gross profit so what does that mean it means that just for sake of uh, simple math let's just use like simple numbers 
So let's say that our gross profit is 2 million bucks um, per year. Our net profit out of that is 1 million bucks per year. And then we have a, we are using a multiple of four. Then what, what does that mean? So if we just, if we use the gross profit as the, we, I mean, calculating with the gross profit, it means 2 million bucks times multiple of four is 8 million versus if it, we just use the net profit without any kind of add backs, we have uh, 1 million times four equals $4 million. So that means that we have like a big difference here. I mean, it's twice as high. So we should try to figure out how we can use the ad packs to actually get the SDE closer to the gross profit. So the, so the gross profit should, should be our starting point for the SDE. Does that make sense? So, I mean, we can just use the ad packs in order to get the SDE number closer to the gross profit. Hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you like this video and would like to get more of this. And if you need my help or want to get uh, additional resources, then make sure to join my free Facebook group. There's tons of different resources there that you can use to increase the valuation of your business. See you there.